Hello, I'm Darren again. Welcome to my Mental Health Information and Awareness channel. Now, today's topic is an answer to a question, um, can men be covert narcissists? Um, following on from a video I did on a relationship with a vulnerable narcissistic wife, you know, what would a relationship with a vulnerable narcissistic husband be like? Okay, now, if you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and please check out my other videos on mental health related topics. Now, First of all, when we're talking about narcissism, I'm not talking about how we can be selfish from time to time, because we all can. I'm talking about pathological narcissism. And let's be clear, women can be narcissists as well. They can be covert narcissists. They can be grandiose narcissists as well. But for today, I'm focusing on a husband. And when I use the term husband, I'm referring to, I suppose, any kind of long-term male partner. Now, narcissistic personalities can be characterized by being self-centered, having a sense of entitlement, low in agreeableness, being manipulative and having no respect for boundaries. And there are different shades, as I've talked about before, uh, the two extremes being the grandiose or the overt, um, or being the vulnerable or the covert. You know, the terms are interchangeable, but they, they would be at the two extremes um, of the narcissistic spectrum. And there's a lot of different types in between. So behavior number one, he is in a constant state of discontent and strain. He is always at some kind of a disadvantage to everybody else. Everything is a hassle to him. Everything is a chore. But because he's such a great fella, he perseveres. But his wife never appreciates anything he does, okay? Now, for example, he may cut the grass, but he had a bad back while he was doing it. You know, he looked after the kids, but he had been exhausted from work all day. He does any kind of housework at all, even though he's completely exhausted, even though he's absolutely wrecked. Secondly, he tends to lack assertiveness. Um, in fact, he can be quite cowardly at times. So he's often passive aggressive as opposed to being aggressive and openly threatening. Any threats are often implied about bad things that might happen to him or, or the struggle he might experience or others might experience if, if he was to do whatever, if something were to happen. He will pour scorn complain, judge and criticise. But he'll always do it, uh, I suppose, from the perspective of the wounded victim, the wounded hero. He'll make jokes with jags. He'll even gossip. If he doesn't say something outright, something about the wife, something about the partner, something about the friend, something about whoever it is, if he doesn't say something outright, he will strongly imply it, you know. Things like, um, I notice she's sober today. Did you see that? I'm, I'm glad you're here because she goes mental when you're not here. At least she behaves. Thirdly, he has what I would describe as a kind of quiet kind of smugness to him. He will always know best. And he'll be very crushed and wounded if, if he's at any kind of fault or if he's disagreed with. Now, unlike the grandiose, um, he's not going to jump all over the wife's opinion. Um, he will more like passively observe, thinking of ways to undermine and rubbish her. Now, this could involve things like eye-rolling, sighing, shaking his head, laughing at her as he walks off in mid-sentence. He will generally dismiss anything she has to say due to his superiority. And he will create the most outrageous narratives based on his own conceited views. Because remember, underneath this, this smug, confident facade is, is a very vulnerable, ashamed person who struggles to connect with anybody in any kind of meaningful way. Next up, he is self-absorbed. As I've already said, he is self-absorbed and only views the world around him as to how things apply to him. He has an inability to pick up on nuances, uh, even from his wife, someone he might have known for years. Quickly jumping to conclusions, never giving the benefit of the doubt or, or accepting that he may be mistaken. And it is always what he wants. If he, in, if he isn't interested in it, then it's boring, it's stupid, it's useless. Why would anybody waste their time? Any response to anything is always going to be from his perspective, from his frame of reference and how it applies to him. Now, an example of this might be, say his wife were to buy him a new watch for his birthday. Even if he said, you know, I, I need a new watch and she buys him a watch, you know, she picks a really nice watch. The type of thing that he would like, it won't be the one he wanted. You know, he... Typically, he may ask for the receipt and go and have it changed for the one he would prefer. 
and he will spend a lot of time, a lot of time on his own little hobbies, his video games, his golf, his whatever it is he does, because he is under so much strain and he needs to relax. Now, it doesn't matter what his wife's going through. It doesn't matter what she has to do. He's the one that needs to rest and recover. If she were to ask him to help, you know, um, even, you know, try and embarrass him, shame him into helping her because she's under so much pressure, chances are he will put in the poorest, most half-assed attempt and pretty much watch her get frustrated, tell him to go back to doing what he's doing and she ends up doing it herself. Next up, he seems incapable of having a good time. Now, for example, the meal in the restaurant was delicious. It was a lovely restaurant, but he had a sore stomach. You know, that concert was great. It was really exciting, but he had a headache. Oh, the sex was marvellous, but he had a sore leg. Because to connect with anyone on any more than the surface level might expose some kind of vulnerability. There might be some kind of new expectation on him. So, you know, these tactics are a way of keeping her at a distance. Next up, he lacks empathy. Now, like I've said before, any responses are always going to be about himself. So if his wife were to come to him in some kind of distress, something awful has happened, she's worried about something, that conversation will be turned around to be about him. You know, for example, didn't you think that's bad? Would he hear what happened to me? Like I said, anything at all he does is always going to be on the restraint. There will be some kind of illness or injury or difficult obstacle he had to overcome, something he had to persevere through. And that lack of connection, naturally it's his wife's fault because she just doesn't understand him. She just doesn't get him. She just doesn't appreciate him. Because his self-esteem is so low, everything is processed and taken personally. It's about him, not his behavior. It's about him. If his wife were to disagree with him, then in his mind, she is a bad, nagging kind of fishwife who doesn't appreciate him. He is a put-upon man trying his best. More often than not, he will be convinced that his wife is cheating on him or slandering him to others. Um, now, I believe, and it is only a belief, I believe that it's because if he were truly honest with himself, I think he knows that she could do so much better than him. She deserves so much better than him because he doesn't really know how to have or maintain a healthy, positive image of himself. So he will create these fantasies of being a heroic, brave, assertive person and she must buy into it. And so this kind of makes him like an outrageous liar, but it's all just to make him seem interesting. Next up is the toxic amnesia. Now, I think this leads to there being no learning, no growing. Um, he forgets the lie he told two minutes ago. He forgets the thing they agreed that very morning. That's often why the arguments are about the same thing over and over again. And if not, they are the same recurring theme and pattern. Because the only thing he ever learns are new tactics to do the same thing. And the same thing is usually to avoid any kind of responsibility. And he will guilt trip her, but he will guilt trip her in a very childlike way. You know, uh, him and his wife have an argument earlier on. So for the rest of the evening, he's he's stomping about the house. He he now has to set his affairs in order. He starts writing out his will in front of her. You know, are you watching me do this? He starts writing letters for his children for them to read years from now when they're older. And he's long since gone because of the argument they had maybe 10 minutes ago. So what's going on with him? Well, I believe he lacks the ability to control, bully, intimidate, domineer the way his grandiose counterpart can. So he tries, he tries more cowardly, childlike, neglectful tactics. And like most on the narcissistic spectrum, he's punishing his wife for the emotional humiliation, that unkind humour he was subjected to, that learned helplessness that he learned as a kid. Now, normally from, say, a narcissistic parent. He doesn't really know how to be himself. He doesn't really know how to have a healthy, toxic-free relationship with anyone, never mind himself. So he thinks his wife only loves him if she worships him, if she drops everything for him, sees things his way, agrees with everything he says, rescues and praises him. He wants to be the only thing in her life. The, ironically, the very things he's doing are the very things that are pushing her away. He is alone, he is emotionally isolated and he is in pain. He wants his wife to be as well. 
So they're my thoughts on what a relationship with a vulnerable, narcissistic husband is like. There's other things such as gaslighting, blame shifting, constant tantrums and so on. If you have any thoughts or opinions, please use the comment box below. I like reading and responding to your comments. Please let me know if there's any other topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel for future updates on mental health related topics. Thanks for watching.